Hey guys, it's Sam with The Blind Life. Welcome back to the channel where I help you learn how to live your best blind life. I am still here in New York City for this really cool trip and one of the, well, we're in Baltimore now. Oh, okay. I was in New York this morning, yeah. just drove to Baltimore. Thank you. <laughs> it's been a crazy trip already. Um, but I'm in Baltimore. We're doing a photo shoot right now with Justin Bishop, professional skateboarder, professional blind skateboarder. Justin, Justin. awesome, man. It's nice to meet you finally. Nice to meet you too. Yeah, I've enjoyed our conversation so far. So it's cool that we get to do it on camera. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I thought I'd introduce him to you guys and talk a little bit, have Justin tell you a little bit of his story maybe, yeah. Yeah. Uh, his vision story, what he's got going on there, and then your journey with skateboarding and kind of yeah. where that's led you. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, I guess I'll just start from the beginning, sure, like we were yeah. talking about earlier. So yeah, I have a, um, a mutation of a RP. Uh, my mutation is uh, the RPGR mutation. Um, so when I was young, like 10, 8, they actually thought I had stars guards because I actually started developing um, uh, macular degeneration first. Right. Uh, because my central vision is what was going first instead of getting tunnel vision. Yeah, we were talking about that. It's, yeah. it's kind of rare in the RP world. Yes. Most of them lose their peripheral first, yep. works its way in, but yours was opposite. Yep, yeah, and so because I lost central first, it's kind of like one of those things that you don't use it, you lose it. Yeah. And since I wasn't using my peripheral, it just, it went pretty fast. But um, the one thing I wanted to say was, um, a good thing with that is that I lived in that low vision, visually impaired, like, you know, gray area for about five years of my life and it was the worst time ever. Living in that like straddling both worlds of being blind but being able to see something is the hardest way emotionally because like you don't you don't know what you can see but you can see and yeah. so it's so hard. So anytime I meet somebody that's still going through the journey and they haven't like the band-aid hasn't fully come off yet, mm -hmm. I'm always like, dude, I'm so sorry. Like where I'm at now I have to use my cane. I have to use voiceover. I have to depend on others. I have to use my um, mobility training. And so like it's, you know, now it's my life. Yeah. And so once I was comfortable after losing my sight, everything went back, be everything got better. I went back to skateboarding and um, yeah, just life's awesome now. <laughs> how, old you, how old were you when you started losing your sight? So I started losing my sight um, when I was like 15. Uh, that's when we started noticing. So I had to go to the eye doctor to see when I uh, like if I could get a license. Yeah. I got my license. I lost it when I was 20. Oh man! Um, so you had it. And then... Yeah, yeah. So I got to experience it. Uh, so that I was very lucky um, that I got to experience driving. Um, so from the age of 20 to 25, that's when I was in that really hard gray area of kind of being able to see, but not. And um, that was kind of rough, but 25, I lost uh, a huge uh, portion of my vision. Mm. And um, that's when everything went gray. And I can see shadows, but kind of, but not really. And um, it was like a dark time because the Band-Aid fully came off. But I look back at the time and it's, it's almost like it was a really, really bad time, but I finally got to properly breathe losing my eyesight right you know somebody that's uh slowly losing their eyesight they grieve monthly because like they have to adjust to now what they can see and then mm -hmm. slowly grieve away what they lost and then the next month they have to repeat it all over yeah they get used to it and then yeah. yeah and so i finally got that out of the way and had a nice three year solid grieve you know <laughs> people think that i oh, become a skater like I got over it and like, right. you know, I picked myself back up and I did, it, it was rough for three years. Yeah. Um, but after the grieving time was over, just, I picked up life again and got into skateboarding again, started doing my passions again. And, um, and it brought me to where I'm at now. Yeah. It's nuts. <laughs> I know. Well, yeah. and then I want to talk about that, but I, I do want to touch on that. Yeah. yeah. I talk about this a lot on the channel that, um, there is the grieving stage. There's a sense of loss. Like you yes. go through all the different stages of grief. Yes. Because you have lost something, especially people that lose their vision later in life. Like you said, you drove. So let me ask you that question. Yeah. Um, Cause this is a topic we've talked about many times yeah. too is, is it better to have loved and lost than never to have loved again as far as driving is it do you think in I, your opinion is it better to drive and then lose it or like me i've never legally been able to drive uh, okay. um so i, I like it's better I, my way. <laughs> I like that i can i was able to experience it so yeah. it's the same thing like i'm glad that i i was able to see at one time because yeah. like if i was born blind maybe i wouldn't have gone through the grieving and it wouldn't have been like so emotionally hard 
but I would never change what I had because now I have a whole memory bank of right. what an apple looks like, what um, the color red is, or you know, like stuff like mm -hmm. that. And so, like even with like my good friend, uh, we have a game we play that he'll describe the new celebrities by saying old celebrities that <laughs> would have had that child celebrity, so I can imagine what this new person looks like. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, so I wouldn't be able to do that if I didn't have a memory bank of vision. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So yeah. now, professional skateboarder. So obviously, you got back into. I guess you you skated before you lost your yes, vision, right? yes, yes. Pretty into it. Yes. Yeah, that's my life. Yeah, yeah. So I was skateboarding at the age of ten, mm -hmm. um, and then when I lost my license at when I was twenty, those five years, I that skate the skateboard was my transportation. The skateboard oh, was, yeah. Yeah. you know, the, my little escape from you know, uh, like you know not being able to read a book anymore, just like those beginning stages of sight loss. Right, right. And um, so that's my escape. And so I, I did it so much. And then when, um, like I said, the Band-Aid fully came off and I never thought I'd be able to skateboard again because I couldn't see my feet, I couldn't see the board, I couldn't see anything. Yeah. That uh, I really gave it up and I was like, I'm done. Like I can't do it anymore. And um, just, uh, I started working at, at this uh, um, skate park with um, kids on the spectrum. So hmm. there's this company in Vegas where we teach kids on the spectrum with autism and, uh, how to have motor skills and social skills through um, skateboarding and other sports as well. But because I skateboard, I could train uh, these kids with skateboarding. Yeah. And so doing that though, I had to start getting back on the board and showing them how to stand, right. how to you know prepare for a trick and just Stepping back on a skateboard brought everything back, brought back all, all the feelings, muscle memory, all the, yeah, yeah. the like, the hate for myself that I ever gave it up, the, you know, sadness that like, you know, I thought I'd never be able to do it again. And then all the happiness of like, I love this feeling. Yeah. I love feeling alive. The freedom. Yes. Yeah. It's the only time I go fast is on a skateboard. You know? <laughs> so it's just, and you're allowed to be reckless. It's my favorite thing about being a blind skateboarder is anytime you're walking around with your cane, you come up to a curb or anything like that, like, I mean, it's beautiful, humanity is beautiful, coming out, reach, like, oh, curb, curb. Oh, yeah. But sometimes it's just nice to be blind and reckless. And like, at a skate park, even if you're blind, no, it can be like, hey, watch out, there's a curb. You're already skateboarding, doing something yeah. dangerous. So, you know, people are gonna let you be reckless. And it's just, it's a great feeling. That's awesome. Yeah. And so getting back on it, and I imagine a lot of practice has gotten you to this level. You're currently competing. Back yeah. you just did a competition, right, recently? Yeah, like yeah, yeah, so or, uh, um, where I'm actually the 2021 um, Adaptive Champion um, for the Grand for Life series. So it's a Jesus. yearly series that every month there's a new contest. And uh, I outperformed the others and got my points up there and um, the hard work paid out for 2021. So yeah, I got first place in uh, the bowl division for Adaptive. Yeah. And so we're actually skateboarding because there's not enough blind skateboarders. So we're very um, fortunate that the adaptive skate community, those are like limb difference, um, amputee skateboarders, um, wheelchair skateboarders, crutch skateboarders, they've uh, welcomed uh, blind and visually impaired skateboarding just with open arms into their divisions and to just let us in. So there's a lot of support in the skateboard community. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. All right, well, so if, um, and you say you're, you're your season is starting up. You got a couple months off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so then, I'm off. So what's next the, year? in the future? So ne next year, what we the whole push is to get skateboarding in the Paralympics for 2028. Oh, and yeah. so um, it's just getting new kids out there, getting kids that went through sight loss or are starting their journey to like let them know, don't give up skateboarding. Or if you never tried it, come try skateboarding. Yeah. We need as many um, skate athletes as we can to get get it into the Paralympics and then it's just a great way to feel alive. So really that's yeah. the push, but um, for 2022, it's, you know, do tour X games and grind for life. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, you guys, you've seen it on my channel. I've, I've got, I've got a couple skateboarding videos out. So, yeah. you know, I'm a huge fan of it yeah. and just getting out there and just trying it. You know, what's, what's the worst thing that can happen? You, you, you could, fall down, you, you get up. Really, and you, yeah, you yeah, again. yeah. You could really hurt yourself, but <laughs> yeah, you don't, don't think, don't think it's easy, but it's the best feeling. It's worth it. It's right? worth yeah, yeah, yeah. everything. Every Everything worth it has risk. That's awesome. All right, Justin, so how yeah. can people get a hold of you if they need to, or where can they find you? Yeah, yeah, you can um, uh, You can follow me on Instagram at Justin the Bishop. Uh, my wife runs my TikTok, because it's not that accessible yet. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. So she runs that, and that's also at Justin the Bishop. That's awesome. Yeah. Great, man, I appreciate it. 
Yep. Yeah, you too, man. <laughs>